This is Teachers Talk Radio, and you are listening live. Hello and welcome to the Sunday Brunch with your host, me, Caleb the Merchant. I hope that you're all ready to talk about marketing today. That's what we'll be talking about today on the Sunday Brunch. As you know, we are on Teachers Talk Radio. My name is Caleb DeMerchant. I am the host here for you on the Sunday Brunch. We are talking about marketing today. I hope that that's a topic that will interest a lot of people and find to be something that you can maybe benefit some knowledge from because I think this it is. is so Teachers here we go. Talk Radio, and you are listening live. Tune in live at ttradio.org or to join in the conversation, download the Podbean app and search Teachers Talk Radio. Follow the hashtag TT Radio. Tune in, talk it out with Teachers Talk Radio. Hello and welcome to the Sunday Brunch. My name is Caleb DeMerchant and you are listening to Teachers Talk Radio. You can follow me, of course, as always on at KDM Drama Wizard on Twitter, or you can follow our discussion on Teachers Talk Radio Twitter page. So we're talking about marketing today. Is marketing something that schools should use? Is it something that should be involved in schools at all? And I, I think this is a really interesting topic for a lot of people because it's something we as educators may not know as much about as as we should maybe. So we're going to talk about it, about that today. And I hope that we can find kind of a middle ground, someplace where we can all benefit from learning a bit about marketing. So again, my name is Caleb DeMersh, and this is the Sunday Brunch Show on Teachers Talk Radio. You can get involved in the conversation at KDM Drama Wizard on Twitter. That's at KDM underscore Drama Wizard on Twitter. Please do write a message. Now, I have always been one to tweet and to send out Facebook messages, as you know if you've followed the show in the past, to help to get the discussion going about our topic for the week. And this week, of course, we are talking about marketing in schools. And when I posted it, I actually didn't get a lot of responses this week. Usually I get quite a bit of responses. And uh, I think I might attribute a bit of that to teachers don't know a lot about marketing in schools. And maybe it might be something that we could all learn a bit more about. So it's not so bad that we didn't get so much of a response this week because we can really help to educate everyone on this topic, I think. And it's a bit of a complicated topic, obviously, because if you're an international listener, you're someone from outside the UK, you might think, well, schools don't have much marketing in them at all. They're not really businesses, are they? Whereas if you're from the UK, you actually know under the current way things are, marketing is a very important part of being a teacher nowadays. And it's a very important part of how the schools run. So whether or not you agree with it or not, it does exist in schools, and that is something that we have to deal with. And therefore, I think it is a really great topic for conversation for us. I think it's something that we can all really kind of benefit learning something about. Because if we know more about it, we can talk about it and maybe, in fact, improve our schools, get involved in the conversation at our schools as well, you know, if we're more educated and we're better able to talk about the topic. And marketing is kind of something that affects, I think, in my opinion at least, all facets of people's lives today, actually. So today, we all talk about marketing like in, in a way or another. We all market ourselves, be it on social media. So for example, I have to market myself for this radio show. I have to market myself for my current job. And I have to have an image that I present to the world. And you know, therefore, it's, it's a bit of marketing, isn't it? And I have to also market myself in a different way when I'm on Facebook, which I consider to be my more private it's my friends and my family and and on there I can be a bit more relaxed, but I'm showing a different side of myself than I am in my, my more open business Twitter side of myself. So we all have to, to market ourselves today, I think, to be truly successful. That's just kind of the way it is, whether or not you run a private business or you work in the public sector, we all have to market ourselves, be it how we dress, the things we talk about. It's it's all a bit of marketing, isn't it? And And some people might disagree with me with that and say, well, that's not marketing, but it is, in fact, marketing. We're trying to make an image of ourselves that we put out there to the world. Now, that's a bit about how we all have to market ourselves to begin with. But if marketing is going on in your school and you're more educated about the landscape of marketing in schools, you can actually help your students. And that's something we're going to talk about today. We can help our students by, by understanding the marketing going on in schools better. Okay, So that's what we're going to talk about a bit today. So marketing, a word most educators have never thought about. Because it's it's kind of outside of our training. It's outside of the things that we must worry about. 
In Canada, there is no need to worry about marketing in schools because everyone must attend their local school. It doesn't matter where you live in the area, you're going to have one school and you're going to have to attend that school more than likely. That's the way it is for most schools in Canada, at least. So I grew up in a very small community, about 3,000 people. And in that community, we had one local school and I had to drive about a half an hour to 40 minutes every day, depending on the weather, to get to school. I couldn't just, you know, take a walk 15 minutes or 20 minutes or five minutes. I had to literally get up early because the bus came about, you know, 6 30, 5 o'clock, depending on the weather again. And then a 40 minute ride into town, maybe more. If it was a really bad day, it could be way more. You might even turn around and just send you home. So that's the way it works at home in Canada. So you don't really have to decide where you're going to go. Now, unfortunately, that's not the way it is here in the UK. In the UK, we are in a bit of a competitive market. Some students can choose where they're going to go to school. They might decide to go to school at one school because of the teachers or because of the programs or the thing that that school can offer, like trips or extracurriculars, all those kinds of things. And the school has to show that off as a part of their marketing. That's why we have open evenings and students come in and look at our schools and walk around and talk to the teachers. And then they can decide, oh, I like this school over this school. I'm going to go there. And obviously, the more people you have attend your school, the higher funding you'll obtain as a school. And I'm not talking here about private schools for international listeners. I'm talking about the public system. I'm talking about schools that every student can attend. You know, your free schools and all those kinds of different things that we have here in the UK's academies, your public schools, that, that everyone has to kind of market themselves. And because of that, people have to compete. We have to say, I, I want to attend this school because it has these things that I like, field trips or uh, going to see shows, going, having different things available for their D GCSE studies. And these are all unique selling features of the school, you know, unique selling points. So USPs, if you're a business person, you're listening to this, you, you know that term. If you're not, as a teacher, a USP is something that puts you, makes you different, makes you something desirable to the person you're trying to sell to. So when the students come in, they have to choose the school they're going to go to. And then that school may receive more funding depending on the amount of students that they get. So we're going to have a discussion today with a marketing friend of mine who used to be a marketer at schools, actually. And he obviously he's way more of an expert on this than I am. And he's going to tell you about what it's like to be a marketer in school. We're also going to go through some different articles that I found that talk about marketing in schools and why that may be a good or maybe a bad thing. But I think by the end of the discussion, what I'd like to obtain today is that marketing exists in schools. It's something that's there. It's a resource for us as educators, and we should use that resource in order to improve our own schools by gathering more people to come in, by having more students come in, by getting better teachers and educators to work at our schools, and just to improve our schools in general. So by understanding marketing, I'm hoping today you'll come away with the knowledge that will overall help you and, and your institution, okay? That's our goal today. So marketing is a big part of the UK's landscape when it comes to education now. We have to think about it. Money is not equal for all schools. That That's a fact. If, if you have more students, you have more students with certain needs or so on and so forth, then you'll receive a little bit more funding. So our your school has to be equipped to deal with those needs of those students. And, you know, that, that boils down to lots of different students. There's not just, you know, students with special needs, but all kinds of different things. For example, PP students, what we call people premium students. So how can you help those students at your school? Well, through marketing you you and gaining more students, you'll get more funding, and then you'll be able to help the students. It's kind of like, you know, the asp eating the tail of the other asp, you know, the two snakes eating each other's tails. That's kind of what's going on here. And, and, and therefore, it's, it's best to get along with the marketers at your school, understand them, and try to help them to be the best that they can be and to understand your school and the needs of the students. Because, again, you are a stakeholder, a stakeholder being someone who has a, an interest in the, vis in the business. Therefore, you are somebody who knows about the business and can help the marketer to run the marketing even better. So I'd like to hear who has marketers in their school, who has marketing in their school, who knows a little bit about that. Get involved in the conversation at KDM underscore Drama Wizard on Twitter or the Teachers Talk Radio Twitter handle being at TT Radio 2022. 
You can get involved in the conversation at either of those Twitter pages. You can also message me privately on Facebook. You can uh, send me an email if you have my email account. You can find me in all kinds of ways. And, and I'm here today to share your opinions on marketing in schools with the world. I want to share what is it like to be a marketer in, you, in your opinion. I want to hear what teachers think about it. I want to hear everything that we all think about marketing. Is it something that we need to have? Again, we're talking about marketing in schools today. What do you think about that? So we were talking about how marketing receive, is how kind of people receive funding for their schools by, by getting more students to come in, by being a school that's better able to equip students by having more students in the school and having more funding and being able to afford things like nice trips and better resources. And again, it's like the snake eating the tail of the other snake, the asp. It's not, it's not a great system maybe, but it is the system that we live in and work in. It could be worse and maybe it could be better in some ways, but unfortunately... Schools are businesses in the United Kingdom as of presently. So I, I might start now with a bit of a, a bit of a journal article that I found, or I might go on to play. I have, again, an interview today with a friend of mine who is a marketer. He used to work in schools as a marketer. And his opinion, I think, will be really good for you to hear. And I think it'll open teachers' up, eyes up to what's it like to be a marketer in school. Uh, I think sometimes we might isolate these people and not include them enough into the overall school system. And that's that's you know, something we need to do more of is include them and allow them to understand the students in the, in the school that they work in. So I was a marketer for a couple of years. I worked for uh, uh, several marketing companies. Uh, I won't disclose that here today on the radio, obviously, but I worked for a few marketing companies. I have training as a BA business analyst, which is a, an associate's degree. So it's, a, you know, a graduate level of education. It was a course I took and I was really interested in becoming a marketer at the time. I came out from my bachelor's degree. I had an English honors and I had my philosophy major and I, I didn't know really what to do with that. So I became a marketer for a little while. So I worked as a marketing agent for uh, a few years, business analyst, and I didn't really like it because I wanted to work with people. So I left that field and became a teacher. And when I did to my shock, when I got to the UK, I found that there were marketers in schools. In fact, there were business analysts just like me coming into schools, working with teachers, trying. And I didn't understand why. Why was it these business analysts were coming into schools doing, you know, analysis of the of the institution, you know, the unique selling points and the, the crisis theory and everything I used to have to do as a marketer? Why were they coming into schools? I just didn't really understand it. And what was going on is I found out that schools in the UK, they have to market themselves. You know, they have to be able to show themselves off a little bit to gain students, to get better funding. And that was a bit shocking to me coming again from Canada, where that's not really something we have to worry about. So I, I just wanted to share that a little bit with you so I can understand being a marketer from being a marketer's perspective. And I can understand being a teacher from being a teacher's perspective. I have both of those perspectives. Now, I have a lot more experience as a teacher than as a marketer. But I did take my course, as I said, my associate's degree, and I did work for uh, almost two years as a marketer. So I do have a bit of experience as a marketer, and I, I worked on several successful projects. So I can understand from both perspectives. So let's see if, what people are saying. I did get a couple of responses on our different platforms, the Podbean app and, and here on Facebook. So let's read some of those responses. I didn't get any on Twitter this week, and I hope next week we can get more involvement. But I understand that this is a topic that teachers may not feel comfortable talking about and want to learn more about. And that's what we're here for. We're educators, and educators should always be educating themselves. We are lifelong learners as educators, of course. We are people who should always be learning. That's what I believe, and so a lot of people would disagree with me on that. But we are, of course. I wouldn't want you know, a doctor who stopped learning about being a doctor. I wouldn't want a doctor who wasn't up on their science. I wouldn't go in and be like, oh, you haven't read a book in almost 40 years. That doesn't sound safe to me. And I think the teachers are also people who need to, you know, always be fixing our pedagogy, always be improving and always be improving our practice. You know, we should show that to our students. We should model that. So, again, my name is Caleb Demerchant. This is the Sunday Brunch Show here on Teachers Talk Radio. We are live every Sunday, of course. And you can find me on Twitter and you can find me on Facebook. My Twitter handle is KDM underscore Drama Wizard. You can get involved in the conversation there. Or on the Teachers Talk Radio Twitter page, their handle is TT, uh, TT Radio 2022. Please get involved in the conversation there as well. 
we're talking about marketing today. I'm going to read some responses that we've had. So one of my good friends, his name is Tanzim. He worked with me as a BA analyst. He still works as a BA business analyst. If you want to find out about him, I'll get his information and post it hopefully on the Twitter. He works in Bangladesh, of course, as a, twi- as a BA. He has his own company. And yeah, I, I help him out when I can. But obviously, I'm so busy now as with my own job as being a teacher, it can be really difficult. But he runs his own business. And he said, nowadays, I think it's not only a business, schools, they're institutions, but also political grounds as well. There are many different things, he's saying, schools. But most of all, they are businesses and institutions, he's saying. And I have to agree with him on that. I, I heard once that, you know, some schools are multi-million dollar institutions that the head teacher of a school is running a multi-million dollar institution depending on how much funding they're receiving. And that and that's quite interesting, isn't it? If there's, they're CEOs of a trust, they're, they could be, yeah, a mil- millions of pounds going into that institution. And depending on the school itself, there might be, yeah, quite, quite a bit of money, millions, maybe not quite millions, but millions at least. I would say some schools do have millions, but those schools are maybe more private institutions, of course. There's lots of money coming into schools at the point, and we have to be able to uh, use that money as as teachers and as, as head teachers and so on and so forth. So I can understand that it can be quite a difficult thing for them. So he's right. Schools are business institutions, and they are businesses, whether we like it or not, at least in the UK they are. So I have someone who's also responded here on the Podbean app. that says, sometimes I think that, unfortunately, hardships – are more business management roles, or headships rather, are more business management roles. Sorry about that. So again, she said, sometimes I think that unfortunately headships are more business management roles. That's very interesting. I think that that must be, that is true in a lot of ways. Like I just said, they have to run these big institutions that have potentially hundreds of thousands of pounds, if not millions of pounds coming through them. If they're running a multi-academy trust, uh, it will probably be millions of pounds coming through that trust. So, uh, yeah, I can understand that. And schools have business managers even now, people who come in and run the day-to-day business of that school here in the UK. And they also have, you know, uh, business officers who come in or, or, or agents or whatever their word might be that they use, their title. They come in and they help run the business of the schools too, where they make videos, they tweet, they do the social media thing, you know, uh, they do the video thing, they do the TikTok thing. And, and you know, if you don't really think that you're, you yourself are a business, that every person is a business, I think you should look at, at our social media landscape today and maybe rethink that because I would say that, yeah, most people, they themselves are businesses and the places they work at, even if they're public institutions, are businesses nowadays. So... I wanted to cut to uh, one of the journal articles that I have for today. Uh, I hope you enjoy this journal article and hope it gives you a little bit of information. Again, my name is Caleb DeMerchant. This is the Sunday Brunch Show here on Teachers Talk Radio. We are talking about our school's businesses. What does marketing in schools look like? What do you think of marketing in schools? Okay, here we go. The Guardian. Academies plan turn schools into business, says Union Chief. By Richard Adams, 2016. ATL leader Mary Boosted tells conference forced academisation will not boost educational standards. Nicky Morgan's plans to force all schools into England to become academies is an attempt to turn education into a business and destroy the public service ethos of teachers, according to one of the heads of Britain's teachers union. Mary Boosted. General Secretary of the Association of Teachers and Lecturers said the changes set out in the government's education white paper, which would lead to 17,000 maintained schools being taken over by multi-academy trusts, contain a big whopper that the forced academisation of all schools will improve educational standards. What is forced academisation for all our schools really about? We know it's not about education standards. It's about running schools as businesses and it's about breaking the public service ethos of teachers and school leaders, Booster told delegates at the ATL's annual conference. Forced academisation is about taking parents out of the picture, no requirement for parent governance. And it appears parents share my concerns. Just go on Mumsnet and see what parents think about forced academisation of their children's school. 
They're not happy. Not happy at all. The other main teaching union, the National Union of Teachers and the National Association of Schoolmasters Union of Women's Teachers, similarly criticised the proposal at their annual conference over Easter, and the NUT raised a threat of industrial action. The changes in the white paper would also end requirements for school governors to include parents, although the Department for Education insists that it would expect the new academy to retain some form of link with parents. Instead of boosting achievement, Bowsted said, mass academisation was an effort to dismantle national pay skills for teachers and recruit unqualified staff. Well, making teaching a non-graded profession is one way to solve the teacher recruitment crisis, isn't it? She said. Bowsted said, Morgan had enough problems as Education Secretary, including an insane new curriculum for primary school pupils, without adding the latest proposal. The white paper is a very strange document, she said. It asks us to believe six impossible things before breakfast, including the big whopper that forced academisation of all schools will improve educational standards. Bowsted said Morgan must be unaware of research by the Ed Department of Education and Ofsted showing poor results in chains of schools run by multi-academy trusts. Either the Secretary of State for Education has not read the letter sent to her by the Chief Inspector of Schools, where he tells her that the worst multi-academy trusts are now performing as badly as the worst local authorities, or her civil servants have kept the letter from her because it is too upsetting. In response, a Department of Education spokesman said, We are creating a dynamic, school-led system in which underperformance can be addressed swiftly and decisively, and where parents can play a more active role in their child's education. The vast majority of schools, which have become academies, are now thriving, and the majority of academies that underperform we can take swift action to solve improvements. The Department for Education highlighted comments by Michael Wilshaw, Ofsted's Chief Inspector, who said that there are some excellent multi-academy trusts that have made remarkable progress in some of the toughest areas in the country. Boosted also attacked what she called the Department for Education's farce in introducing a new Key Stage 2 assessment for 11-year-olds the government has really pulled off a coup here and should be given an award for the level of incompetency it has shown and the level of disarray it has created in schools, she said. All over the country, we are now writing lessons where children are given their writing back if it does not include a fronted adverb or an exclamation mark in a sentence beginning with how or what is utter nonsense. What should be a creative act is becoming a rule-bound chore. There is no way, no way at all to develop children's confidence and no way at all to encourage them to be confident speakers, listeners, readers and writers. The union published survey findings show that 41% of its members believe pupils in their schools were from families that had to rely on food banks. Test. So what do you all think? Do you agree with that? Do you agree with multi-academy trusts are the really kind of the source of all of this marketing in school. I, I know that I've worked at a school in the past that wasn't a member of a, a multi-academy trust and still had marketers. And I still think that schools, even if they're not part of a multi-academy trust, still have to worry about marketing nowadays. Marketing is, again, it's not just about making money. It's about getting students into the school and giving those students extra funding so that they can have a better experience whilst being in your school. So what I mean by that is if you have more students coming into your school, you will therefore get better funding and then your students will have more opportunities, be it going on field trips because there's more funding there, be it having better equipment at the school, be it maybe even building a new school. I know a lot of schools in the UK are kind of a bit run down. This is something I'd like to do an episode about in the future. You know, schools in the UK need, a lot of them need upgrades. They're, they're old buildings that need to be upgraded. That's just the way of putting it. And they won't get that if they're not getting enough students. The marketing, you know, they'll just say the money's not there. So what do you all think? Do you agree with that or disagree with that little 
thing from tests and from the union. Do you agree with what they have to say about marketing in schools? Do you disagree? Please get involved in the conversation at Teachers Talk Radio on our Twitter page at TT Radio 2022 or follow me at KDM underscore Drama Wizard on Twitter. Again, my Twitter handle is KDM underscore Drama Wizard on Twitter. Again, we didn't have a lot of responses this week on Twitter. I'd like to hear more responses from people, be it on Twitter or the Podbean app. I'd like to hear what you think. I know I know you might be thinking to yourself, I'm not an expert on this. I'm not a marketer. I know nothing about this. But even your opinion is something valuable for us because we can. it can help us to learn the lesson that I'm trying to teach today, which is schools are marketing institutions. Schools are businesses. And, you know, whether we like it or not, that's the truth of the matter. Schools schools have to think about marketing. It's just a part of the, the educational landscape today in the UK. So I'm going to play another article very quickly, and then we're going to cut to the news. So that gives you a little food for thought before we have the news. And this one's from Tess, as you may have heard. Here it is. Tess, 27th of February, 2016. Joe Knott. Schools are in the business of education, not the education business. Businesses don't understand the culture of schools, but they need to before they start telling schools what to do. I'm used to being invited to speak at conferences, but last week that invitation also came with a refreshing request to pick my brains. It was refreshing because one of the things that has always puzzled me in a business and political climate or beast with enthusiasts clamouring to tell teachers and schools how much employers value creativity is just how little real-time businesses devote to picking their own or anyone else's brains. My experience has shown me that most business colleagues, however senior, find the idea of a blank sheet of paper genuinely terrifying. They reach for a template like a toddler reaches for their comfort blanket. I once saw a bid response for a multi-million pound educational project written by a team working for a well-known computer company which was actually submitted, still including large sections of the four Latin text that software companies use to fill up those blank pages. And try telling any marketing professional you have a great idea. It will be vilified, shot full of holes, or best stolen, reworked, before you can say, hey guys, listen to this. So when I was involved and invited to have my brains picked, I accepted cheerfully. What follows is partially the result. Schools and teachers, especially in the UK and US, are going through a particularly punishing period of change in which commercial behaviour, strategy and practice are being modelled as exemplary. The burdening number of academics, free schools and charter schools in the US are all symptomatic of this trend. Am I really the only person to have noticed that when academies get together, they are as often as not referred to as chains rather than less supermarket friendly handle as multi-academy trusts. Yet having worked extensively in both fields, I would argue that there are profoundly significant differences between the two worlds. Differences that anyone keen to drive improvements needs to be aware of. Being involved in the business of education is not the same as working for an education business. Most teachers prefer and choose the former. Even those who work in the private sector have a completely different mindset and attitude towards education than employees in an outright education business. Understanding and accepting that is where all schools improvement efforts based on communal practice or strategies of any kind should start from. The Education Funding Agency, for example, recently issued video guidance for schools to improve their financial management and achieve efficiency in using resources. Now, before readers leap headlong into the flood with me and get swept away on a tidal wave of anti-corporate rhetoric, I have no doubt that there are many things schools can learn from good, successful businesses, especially about financial and budgeting. Even teaching colleagues I admire and respected tend to regard things like their department budget as a necessary evil, best left until days before the deadline, or quite often after it. 
And here's a perfect illustration of the kind of thing I mean. Working for a not-for-profit company some years ago, when I asked the team leader for a new project, what the margin they were working on, well, he replied, none, we're not non-for-profit. Not-for-profit quickly became not in business if you don't run enough of a margin to pay for your salaries. But so deeply ingrained in this teaching background was the idea that education is non-commercial. He was prepared to embark on a very expensive project, blissfully unaware of the need to at least break even, or that the taxpayer was funding him. And don't even speak to me about the photocopying. I wonder how many secondary schools in the UK know how many photocopiers they actually have in the building, never mind how much they cost to run. The English department in the school where I did some supply teaching had a book cupboard stuffed to the narwhals with copies of wonderful novels, thousands of pounds worth, all neatly and perfectly stacked and aligned, none of which were ever allowed to be read because the children would lose them. This is what happens in schools where teachers successfully remove themselves totally from the thought of being employed by what is seen as an SME in favour of that more attractive appeal activity of teaching. The introduction of school business managers is a sensible step in the right direction, but no amount of cheap finance officers or accountants will make a dent on the intrinsic motivation that makes teachers prefer making children learn things than making money. One of the most frequently quoted abbreviations change management in business is the assertion that culture eats strategy for breakfast. Well, I would respectfully suggest to those who came up with the strategies of encouraging or even focusing schools and teachers to be more business-like, that they should start by understanding the culture of schools before they try to change them. So that's our news. We'll have that in a moment. I just wanted to cut in one more time and just say, if you want to get involved in the conversation, we're talking about marketing today. My name is Caleb Merchant. This is the Sunday Brunch Show. As you know, we're here every Sunday. You can follow me at KDM underscore Drama Wizard, or you can get involved in the conversation at TT Radio 2022. And again, this is Teachers Talk Radio. This is the Sunday Brunch Show here with me, Caleb Merchant. We're talking about marketing. We've had two articles, one from The Guardian and one from Tess. When you come back from our commercial break, from our lovely sponsors, we will be listening to a chat I had with a local marketer at a school that I know. And he's going to tell you the inside perspective of being a marketer in a school. I hope you enjoy that. And here is our lovely word from our sponsors and the news. This episode of Teachers Talk Radio has been made possible with support from Witherslack Group, the UK's leading provider of SEN education and care. They're here to support you, too, through an ever-growing offer of free resources, including webinars, podcasts, articles, and events aimed at supporting teaching professionals like you. Visit their website at www.weatherslackgroup.co.uk to find out more. Introducing Uplearn. Uplearn is an online curriculum learning resource for A-levels that improves student outcomes whilst reducing teacher workloads. Teachers use Uplearn to facilitate independent learning and consolidation of classroom material. Over 150 schools have seen grade improvements with Uplearn, including St Paul's Girls School, Michaela Community School and ARC Schools. Book a demo at uplearn.co.uk and quote TTR for 10% off. That's Uplearn, U-P-L-E-A-R-N dot co dot UK. Introducing Bulb. With evidence-based learning at the forefront of education, let Bulb digital portfolios help reshape your educational practice. Bulb helps teachers teach and learners learn. Bulb is an easy-to-use, fully accessible digital platform that captures students' digital learning assets in one place, allowing them to evidence their learning and reflect on their growth. Our dedicated team of education specialists are on hand to ensure that Bulb fits seamlessly into all of your teaching practices. Come take a look and get a free account at bulbapp.com. If you're listening to this, then we know we share one thing in common. A passion. 
for the type of outstanding education that every child deserves. That's what makes us the leading provider of specialist education and care. We need people like you to help us achieve even more. With us, you'll be given all the resources and support you need, offered a clear path to career progression, and be rewarded with some of the best salaries and benefits the industry has to offer. We are with a Slack group. If you'd like to find out more, we'd love to hear from you. Visit www.withaslackgroup.co.uk forward slash careers and be part of our future. This is Teachers Talk Radio and this is Teachers Talk Radio News with Gail Glenn. According to a report in the Times Educational Supplement, schools are struggling to create the collegiate environment required for recovery post-pandemic as a result of the top-down pressure experienced by school leadership teams. Results of a new survey show that one third of teachers cite management issues in schools as the reason most likely to lead them to quitting the profession, along with pay and working conditions. CEO of the Chartered College, Alison Peacock, has called for more support for teachers as a response to this survey. She warned, education recovery will only occur if teachers and leaders are provided with necessary support. General Secretary of the NAS UWT Teaching Union, Dr Patrick Roach said, the government must do more to tackle adverse and bullying management practices in schools. Teacher wellbeing is vital to securing the country's education recovery after the pandemic. The survey of 4,690 teachers was carried out by TeacherTap on behalf of BET UK. In Ethiopia, Education Minister Beranu Nega announced that conflict unleashed by the Tigray People's Liberation Front has seriously affected the access to schools of more than 3 million students in the areas invaded since June. More than 1,200 schools have been completely destroyed due to the war, while three universities in Amara State were totally or partially damaged by the Tigrayan forces. The rebuilding of these institutions will cost in the region of $2 million. In Kenya, the Education Cabinet Secretary, Professor George Magoa, has voiced his hope that vocational and technical training in the country will be strengthened to help with the country's economic development. Magoa said the demand for plumbers, electricians, technicians and artisans was rising, challenging learners to take advantage of the demand and acquire the necessary skills to fill up the gaps. He said, we must tell our people that every job is important. At technical and vocational education and training institutions, you can develop skills that can address an existing problem in the community and in turn secure employment. We must move away from the examination orientated system and impart skills in our learners to ensure that they are competent to face the workforce. The government has rolled out an annual 2 billion Kenyan shilling conditional grant to vocational training colleges to boost enrolment. This has been your weekend Teachers Talk Radio News with Gail Glenn. This is Two Minute Tech with Steve Woods, your tech briefing on Teachers Talk Radio. 
Hello, today I'm responding to a tweet from Michelle Stevens at M underscore Stevens Zero, pointing out to at Team English One that a lot of people don't know about the snipping tool, and she was compiling a list of shortcuts. The thread sparked a lot of fantastic responses and inspired today's two minute tech. Today I present Getting Snippy With It. In Windows, a simple shortcut combo of Windows plus Shift plus S opens the snipping tool. The snipping tool is like an advanced version of print screen. After the combo key press, a small menu appears giving you five options. Rectangle select, which is draw a box around what you want, freeform select which is draw a shape around what you want, window select which is pick the window you want to capture, screen select which captures the full screen or replication of the print screen button, some may say there's no point to this but stay tuned, there is, finally there's a cross to close and pressing escape can do the same thing. If you have an interactive board you can pin snip and sketch to your taskbar, right click the icon and select pin to taskbar, now you can press it to make screen grabs and not have to go over to the keyboard. Snip and sketch also gives you the ability to annotate on a screenshot. To make this even more powerful did you know pressing Windows and V shows your last 25 captures to your clipboard? The first time you use this, you'll need to switch on the feature by pressing Windows and V and agreeing to switch it on. Now you can take several screen captures and then paste them into the app you're presenting with. This can be very time efficient. For this week's visual version of the episode, I've made a series of clips and given some real life examples of using the snipping tool. So don't forget to check out TT Radio 2020 Twitter feed. I'm Steve Woods and that was Two Minute Tech. Two Minute Tech with Steve Woods. Your tech briefing on Teachers Talk Radio. Hello and welcome to my interview with Eric. He's a marketer who used to work for a school here in the local area. So please enjoy this interview. And if you'd like to get involved with the conversation about marketing in schools, please, you can tweet at me at KDM underscore Drama Wizard or you can go to the Teachers Talk Radio on Twitter. So you can so you can go to their page as well, as you all know already. So this is Eric, and he's a marketer. He's been doing it for a while for schools. So yeah, Eric, would you uh, you can begin by telling a little bit about yourself if you like. Hey, um, well, it's been uh, very pleased to be part of the show. Uh, yeah, my name's Eric, and um, I've been. Being part of the, um, you know, doing marketing in the education sector for a while. And, um, yeah, I guess we met together in the same place in the secondary school. That's right. And, um, yeah, so we're just going to talk about marketing in education. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So I have some questions for Eric. And I'll, if you have any questions, obviously you can ask. This is a recorded interview, but we can get to him and your questions can get answered if you have any. Again, you can tweet at me at KDM underscore Drama Wizard on Twitter. As you know, if you're new to the show, that's the handle. Or you can go to the Teachers Talk Radio Twitter page and tweet us, tweet at us there as well. So, uh, the first question was, yeah, just a little bit about who you are. But the second question I have is, what does a marketer at a school do? So, could you explain to us a little bit about what marketers do at schools for people who might be international or people who might not work in that sector in the UK? Yeah, certainly. It's it's quite a strange concept, I think, like traditional historically marketing and schools and education that's you know they, they they could not be as more far apart than they ever were um but yeah nowadays um there's competition obviously like um the government um i suppose priorities have changed around education um so now like how things have become especially around secondary education uh, secondary schools it's very competitive because mm. there's no, I suppose the onus on catchment areas has been diminished. Um, so now it's more about a freedom of choice for um, young sense. young people and their parents. So parents now have the opportunity to send their, their child to any school, really. Mm. Um, so it's not about, it's not strictly about um, geography anymore. That's so. Right. So now that's a by, um, so the byproduct of that is now everyone's scrambling for the same young people, plus they're scrambling for the same standard of young people. Mm-hmm. So yeah, any well uh, well performing primary school, you know, uh, the best of the best get to choose whatever school they want to go to, and everyone's scrambling for the same. Uh, um yeah it's it's very very interesting but it's a very competitive landscape now 
um, which is obviously if you have the opportunity to send your um, uh, your, your your child anywhere. Yes. Um, yeah. So on the other side for for schools, yeah, it's just made it more competitive. Really good, well organized, good performing schools have. Um, they have. Yeah, they just have all the opportunities to get those young people. Yeah. So, so for people who aren't in the UK, it might be kind of hard for them to understand, but school isn't some you in Canada for example you have to go to the local school but yeah. because there's so many schools in, in the UK you can just choose where you want to go basically and some schools are rated better than others by the governing body which is called Ofsted so that might be a bit confusing to some people uh who might be abroad is so all that really means is some schools have better ratings than others and you might want to send your child to that school and somebody like Eric is the person who gets that information out to people, I guess, for lack of a better way of putting it. Whereas in Canada, you don't have a choice. You have to go to this school um, because it's the local school or you have to go to this school because it's, it maybe it's located on your reservation. That would be who has the choice back home. So back home, if you're Native American, you might have a choice. Um, but most people, they have to go whatever school they're closest to. Uh, in bigger cities, it's the one you're closest to in vicinity. They give you a mile radius. It used to be that way here, wasn't it? Yeah. Many years ago, right? Yeah, I think uh, the introduction to uh, the idea of academies okay. and trusts, where you can have one organization that's looking after multiple schools, um, and then there's multiple stakeholders, and then that's when things get complicated, thus the requirements for marketing. Um, that makes sense. So yeah, so the the the, comp the 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 marketplace, well organized, well um, performing schools, they get the top picks, so they become oversubscribed. So then that leaves everyone else to scramble. What, what do you mean by a top pick? Um, just just a well. So as you m mentioned, Ofsted. So mm -hmm. obviously, Ofsted would give a school a ranking. Mm -hmm. So you, how's it go again? From There's um, inadequate, which means that so they're going to be closed down. Yeah. Basically, uh, requires improvement, which is a little bit higher. Good, and, and then, then outstanding. outstanding yeah. I believe so. Yes. Yeah. So if you have an outstanding school, every parent, you know, everyone has the same. They don't want the, the best for the uh, for their ch for their child. So and that they, brings you, up a good point as well is that some schools can be actually shut down in the UK if they don't meet a certain standard, uh, or whatever the government considers to be a high standard. And this is a contentious issue in the UK, obviously, because those teachers and schools are being judged on sometimes things that everyone doesn't agree with. Mm. So that's a, a very diplomatic way of saying it. Yeah, the metrics yes. have definitely been shifted around. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah, that, that, that's that's it really. That's the, that's the good crux point. of it. So. Why why do you think marketing is so important in schools? Why is it an important thing for a school to have a marketer? Um, yeah, like we said, things are more competitive. It's really just about the competition, really. Mm -hmm. um, but then once you go past that, it's nice. You know, there's a lot of schools doing great work. Mm -hmm. um, doing, you know, schools are part of the community. Absolutely. And, you know, to get more... I suppose to just to feel more involved within the community you you want to tell everyone you know this is what we do and um this is what our young people do and we've got all these great programs and initiatives and extracurricular stuff and yeah so it's, it's all about making your school stand out in whatever unique selling point it may have okay. so if it's not you know doesn't have the Ofsted outstanding label mm -hmm. You need to, what you would need, be some, besides to... the outstanding label? What would be some unique selling points for a school? What kind of unique selling points might they have? I'd say maybe there's a there's a great culture. Perhaps they have a big onus on certain subject areas because a lot of academies, you have science academies, you have sports academies. Oh, interesting. So yeah, that's a, that's it. already like a, a unique selling point. And then perhaps. Um, they might have a good reputation in terms of well-being, mm -hmm. maybe really mm -hmm. good at tackling bullying. Um, so, yeah, there's different ways, you know, other than just having that label from Ofsted, there's different ways you can sell your school mm -hmm. just so, so people know what's some, happening. Some people probably want to go to the same school, want their kids to go to the same school they went to as well. That would be a selling point for some schools, obviously, local catchment area. 
but it depends really how that person felt about going to school there, I guess. Some mm -hmm. people love their school just like back home, and some people hate their school, you know? So that's a little bit about some unique selling points that schools might have. So Eric, what are some tips you might have for someone who might want to get into marketing? What are some tips you have for them? Um, so I'd say the sort of mindset or basically, or maybe this type of personality that would work quite well in that sort of environment. Um, first thing, you know, you, you need to be, you, you can't detach yourself from the people you're working for, with, so which I'm saying is the students. So you need to be comfortable in that environment. Um, there are a couple of challenges, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, um, so you need to be able to be very, you need to be very open-minded. So what about in terms of equipment? W w would there be any tips towards equipment a marketer in a school might need? Yeah, there, there's, well, you know, I, I, I love my equipment. So yes, I yeah. that's, why I th that's why I thought I'd ask you the question because I know. <laughs> Actually, funny story. So how me and Eric, I think, became pretty good friends. We knew each other before this, but we became pretty good friends. He had to shoot this video for the school. And what it was was he wanted to do this kind of complicated shot where you take multiple little photographs, basically. Oh, yes. A, hy a hyperlapse. It's a called. hyperlapse. That's what it's called. So Eric knows. And you, you take all these photographs and you got to stitch them together and it makes this really neat effect where it goes around the school. So me and my wife and Eric, we spend all day sticking down pieces of tape and nothing makes you become a friend better than putting down about 10,000 pieces of tape around a building, you know? The so. whole perimeter. I think uh, <laughs> we measured it out and the amount of photos we came out was, was definitely over a thousand. It was over a thousand. Yeah, so we yeah. laid down way over a thousand pieces of tape. I yeah. think it must and have been two or three thousand pieces of tape, to be honest. With, it, with any creative <laughs> endeavor, um, mistakes are made. So we yeah. had to do it again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had to do it all over again after we did it. But that's how it always goes with these things. You know, so none of these things end up perfect. Like when we make anything for this radio show you know like last week the ra the power went out during the radio show and i had to stop the show and then i had to start it again with and i had to take a half an hour off the show basically because we lost power and that's just not controllable so these things happen obviously so eric is a very good source of information about equipment so he could give you some <laughs> tips i think if you're a marketer on some pieces of equipment you might use but yeah um yeah there is in, ter in terms of equipment i suppose as a marketer really the only thing you really need is internet mm. and a spreadsheet and you can, you can get something done. That's true. Um, but in terms of content creation, um, yeah, you, you need a decent laptop. You've got, you got to have the software. So, you know, like uh, Creative Cloud by Adobe. Um, what about uh, photography is quite important, mm. you know, um, for your social media. You know, good, good imagery just engages people much better. So... Um, yeah, there's a, there's a f you can go as far as you want, but there are minimums. I'm not saying you need just a good system. You got you got to have access to different services, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, you can go from there. Really. A good camera is an important tool, obviously. Yeah, camera. Yeah. You know, this. But I guess people have nice phones. They could take a video. Yeah, off, you know, yeah. they can do something with yeah, that. Yeah, I've, I've I've known people, uh, other marketers who just have bare minimum but they can make, they can make some great stuff but um yeah if there's a budget just push for it <laughs> yeah that, that's a good point <laughs> that's, Th that's... that leads me to a good point so uh, is one thing you you have to worry about is the budget i guess that's a bit of a tip as well yeah 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 it does because ma marketing has so many facets you know you, you you're trying to use different channels to to engage people you know using show, social using digital marketing traditional media so that's even like putting ads and newspapers having great newspaper stories or get okay, you know um yeah there's just so, so many facets to it and the digital side so you, you can't ignore any of it it's all, it's all useful it all makes a contribution shall i say no that's a, that's a, those are good those are good points and in terms of like clientele is there any businesses you would recommend to a business like someone you could work with that would help you with your marketing um it's a good idea you know, a school is part of a community, mm -hmm. so you you need to get to know who's in your community. So Absolutely. local businesses, other charities, um, yeah, get get as many stakeholders on board as you can, mm -hmm. and that that actually that's what ultimately improves either the reputation or the perception of the school, because all this stuff is word of mouth. That's what ultimately would change a parent's decision. Or their their child to where where they'd like to go 
Yeah, for being a member of the community, someone who stand a school that stands out. If you have two schools and one is highly in the community, and the other isn't. That's going to affect it, isn't it? That's a you yeah, winning. Absolutely. That's a winning absolutely. Re- recipe. Is there any other tips that you might have, or we can come back to it as we go along? Um, I think we did speak about some of the challenges because yes, you know, yeah, always can go back. Yeah. So like how we were saying. This is kind of a new thing, really, marketing mm. in education, especially in, like, secondary education. Um, and that um, there, there are challenges to it because other, you know, the staff body might not really understand why you're asking them to... Sure. Well, know, they're not marketers, right? So they yeah. don't know why you want to take pictures of them maybe in class, and they're like, please don't take pictures of me. Or, like, all. you know, like yeah. videos we're, we're doing for um, open evenings. Sure. You know, open evenings are in in terms of a school's cal- calendar. That's when you really do your showcasing. So open evenings, it's a great tip. That's 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 that's, that's, a, that's a big deal. Do you so, think yeah. that those things should be uh, physical and digital nowadays? Because I have a feeling that they should be. Yes, you know, you use the digital to let uh, to inform other parents that yes. This is our open evening. We're doing it this day, so come along. And these are the great things we can do. And we've got activities, uh, all the stuff. So that, that's how you know you need, you need to get people in. Uh, but it's more about making sure the teaching staff is on board. Everyone's singing from the same hymn sheet, you know. Um, yeah, it'd help if you could have meetings before, as the marketer telling people, kind of a, a staff meeting together. So that mm-hmm. might be a tip for head teachers listening: is get your marketer to actually hold a meeting to tell everyone what's going on because they're a stakeholder right mm. so they need to know what's going on in terms of the marketing in general they should see the numbers maybe and i think yeah it'd be important for the school to understand the staff to understand the marketing would you agree with that yeah um, um uh, basically leadership uh, mm-hmm. slt you know uh, senior leadership team that they they actually they they need to you know they they need to say that, explain to the staff like this is really important so we, we you're really following the lead of the leader so sure, if, they, if they, they have a good buy-in everyone else will buy in and then you know we makes, have lots it, of head teachers who listen to the show so you know they they probably may not all understand the value of a marketer but there definitely is value in a market and having a marketer smaller communities maybe not that have less schools but when you're in a competitive market like here mm-hmm. or in london so on it's going to be yeah competitive you got to compete right that's yeah. how you keep your school open yeah so uh, the next question i have is a, a pretty good one i think and it's one that i'm going to get asked a lot by canadian people so they would say why why does a school need to be a business at all and it kind of runs off what we were just saying yeah i, I can see how marketing and business may kind of be misconstrued uh i'd say you got to keep the marketing side of it separate because the objective is that the objective is very straightforward and the the outcome is what you want are very straightforward so there's no it's it's, it's not a fuzzy situation to be it's Absolutely. it's very obvious you know we're just trying to get just gone a better profile for the school. Well, and more then, students too, because some schools don't even have their maximum intake. There's yeah. lots of schools that don't have their maximum intake, and when they don't have that, what happens to their funding? And so, that's why you need the marketing. Yeah, well, people might not understand. What would happen to your funding if you don't have your maximum intake? Yeah, just, yeah. Um, it, this sounds a bit, I don't know, might sound a bit shrewd. Well, um, well you're a marketer, but... so that's fine. People <laughs> want the, That's what people want in a marketer. It's... So. Um, yeah, as we know, each student is worth something to the school, um, and different students bring different types of money. Yeah, um, funding behind them, yeah, so on diff- and so forth. Yeah, yeah different of funding. So, yeah, you you just can't afford to be undersubscribed nowadays because your school will be shut down. Yeah, but if you want to have a lot of people, premium students at your school or students, SEN students, right? You're going to have to be able to provide things to those students that other schools can't. And that's so where you specialize. Your unique you selling can, points, as yeah, you were you, saying. You figure it out, but you, you got to do the work. You know, you got, you got to take interest. you got to do the market research or get someone to help you do the market research. And, and funny enough, nowadays, just to prove the idea of the importance of marketing, there's, you know, there's a lot of agencies which specialize 
in marketing in education really so there's a whole agency there's loads of agencies you know so it, it, it just shows like wow okay this is important. so an expensive business so to speak it's Some... become an important business yes i'd say yeah 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 it, i'd say it is it, it must be I don't know. It, it had to be a big industry in this country. It'd be worth a lot of money. I wouldn't begin to estimate. It's a growing sector. Yeah. It's a growing sector. But for me... The um, public money alone must be quite a bit, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It all depends on budgets. But for me... And these I, aren't private schools we're discussing here. These are just schools. Every school in the UK. Yeah. This, yeah. This is not a private school, just so everyone understands. You might not be from this country. Yeah. For, for me, as a marketer, it's, it's really... It's actually quite an interesting sector to be in because, you know it's all about caring about things really ultimately you know you yes. care about the community and you want people to know about it and you want to improve things um you want to contribute in your little way that you can no that makes sense you know uh helping the future yeah, generation th all that the same things that teachers get into as a marketer you kind of need to share the same values um, yeah, to do yeah. a good job yeah and, I, and that's something important i think that everyone understands is you know, marketers in schools aren't aren't bad people. Uh, capitalism, you may see it as a bad system, but the marketer in the school, they they have a job to do. They're trying to help the school by getting more funding for the school, which will enable them to be able to do more for the students in the long run if they have more funding, obviously. Yeah. So the more funding they have, the better for the students in it in the end. And it's sad that it has to be so shrewd or cutthroat, but that that is the way it is in this country, at least. Uh, that is the way it is. Yeah, and then I suppose we, I guess we can talk about the perks. Yeah, what are some of the perks? Go on. People um, want to hear about that. I, I suppose in my in my in my experience, you know, um, had um, I was really proud about having a group of students um, who were the school journalists. That's really nice, yes. So every fortnight, you know, the, they'll be searching for stories. And, you know, and probably the best people to try and get stories out of, you know, j just out of the... The staff or whomever. The, the staff or the other uh, students, you know, part of the school population is other students, you know. Um, it, it, it's easy for them to relate to the students and... And, and yeah, they they really enjoy it. So having the student journalists, I think that was my favorite part of it. Yeah, um, that's a that's a nice thing to run a journalism club for the kids. And... Yeah, and it's you know it, I'm not a teacher, but I got to you know um, share some of my knowledge and. Uh, yeah, but you have to have a passion for young people to work in this job and do a good job at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you can't you, just be like some I said, guy. You, you just have to share sh uh, share the same values. Yeah, um, you're not the wolf of Wall Street, right? <laughs> You have to be you have to be different than that mentality. You can't have you know the American psycho. It's somebody who who cares about children. That's the way it is, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's not um, a Brett Easton Ellis novel. So, what are some of the other best your other experiences you really enjoyed while think, working in schools? Yeah, just like you know, um, I think like you know you have school trips, but this is a pre <laughs> pre COVID. Which yeah, is... before COVID, what kinds of trips would you take? So with your students? All, all sorts of educational trips, you know, going to museums. Um, when they go to different countries, like you know, I knew there was there was a really cool trip where um, some science students went to CERN, CERN in yes. Switzerland. Awesome, yeah. That's amazing, you know. Um, Something kids in Canada or in the United States would dream of doing is going to a place like that, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's, you're lucky in the UK to be able to do yeah. such a trip, really. So exa exactly. So you you go to a trip like that. It's a marketing factor for the school too. A right? parent, a parent would be like, "Wow, that's incredible." I would. I, I've heard about CERN in the news, and my child got an opportunity to go. That's that's an incredible opportunity. Absolutely. It's, yeah, it's cutting edge science, you know. So, but yeah, it's, it's stuff like that going on trips, having the groups, and just interacting with other teachers, like actually getting to understand the needs from a teacher or or the challenges they might face. Yeah, and I think other parts of the job which is supporting um, teachers and stuff. Um, so let's say maybe improving presentations and mm. um, making the brand of the school um, consistent. Um, just adding that little bit of um, a profession, uh, being professional um, with, with the school's brand and image. So that, that's some really good stuff. Is there So as you can see, there's a lot of benefit to, if you're thinking about becoming a marketer in a school, you might be listening to this and you might be thinking, well, that sounds like something I might like to do. I mean, there are lots of benefits to doing it. So 
I was wondering about what were some of the constraints you had as a marketer in a school versus being a marketer maybe in a different field? Um, the, the main thing is, <laughs> the thing with the marketer, it's one of those jobs that everyone thinks they know mm -hmm. what marketing is. So exactly. you kind of need to, you know, uh, just just smile and nod politely uh, while someone's telling you how to do your job, but they clearly don't understand but that 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 is that's something about it because you know it's new it, marketing is new in, in in education so that that's to be expected so it's being able to communicate really clearly the the objectives um just showing them what why it's important it's not the most important thing in the world uh but it really it really does make a difference it makes a difference for the quality of education for those young people though doesn't it, it, it yeah because it, the more money it comes in the better experiences and things they can do and that's sad but unfortunately that's the system we live in and then the business yeah. of schools is about getting good quality teachers so if you're mm -hmm. over oversubscribed school you can you know you, you can get the best teachers around so that improves on, on 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 the education overall of course because teachers are going to want to teach at good schools but good schools are going to be schools that have lots of funding there's would you say there's a correlation between how well a school does and the funding that they have yeah, yeah definitely, yeah, definitely. It's, it's, it's linked yeah they, they they walk hand in hand yeah because even if you want to run like a, a decent science program you're going to need uh, funding beyond going the CERN you're just having science experiments at the school is expensive mm. that, that yeah. department alone is one of the most expensive departments in a school my department uh, as a drama teacher was 1,000 pounds a year that's what I got was 1,000 to run the whole department right mm. I'm going to guess theirs was maybe 20, 30 maybe 100 times maybe more than that you know what I mean they had a lot more money than I had is the point mm. so the yeah so I think it's really important to think about what what funding schools get comes from marketing. It's important to remember that. And the marketer at your school is not the bad guy. I think that's an important thing for everyone to remember. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, not not a bad guy. And yeah. there's no, no, definitely not at all. And there's no constraint, other constraints you can think of that you'd like to talk about. I, I think that was the main thing. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's just you know just making people understand the point of what <laughs> your existence really. Um, and. Um, yeah, it, it, I, th I think it's a good comp contribution to any school, really, um, and it's great for the for the young people themselves. They get excited just being able to see their story in a newsletter or, eh? or in a social media post of some, you know, great achievement. They've a done. tweet or something. Yeah, a tweet. Um, That's one good thing a marketer can do is show off the good things about the school, the students. Yeah, absolutely. Because mm. uh, you know, people can get a bit fixated of just the negative the negatives mm -hmm. young people's behaviors but you know they can they, they create interesting and inspiring stuff every day absolutely so well, why why wouldn't you want to show that off no, it's, I, it's, um, I agree that, that speaks for itself really what was the most challenging project you had to work on when you were a marketer at a school what was a project that really stood out to you I think uh, the um, the main thing was the um, I'd say the market research, um, just getting that right. What that process look like market research for the because most people are obviously teachers. So what did that process look like to help them better understand it? Mainly because with the market research, you, you need to get to understand primary schools and mm -hmm. what they need and what those parents are looking for. So if you don't understand that you're just going to be going the wrong direction so you just want to do your market research be diligent um get your information and then that's how you can put together your strategy and just find the most effective forward uh, way forward um i'd say i'd, I'd say that's the, the the most difficult bit and then also you know you, you need some money you do need some money so there's some budget that needs to be set aside mm -hmm. um and that's where you and slt it's really important that we all you know going in the same direction um yeah that, that's what i'd say is quite, quite a difficult part of it so in terms of projects what kind of projects did you do at the school that stood out to you um yeah we'd do like termly magazines uh, like I mentioned before, open evenings, very yep. important. Um, other um, meetings or events for different stakeholders. So you'd have like um, a parent's voice evening and, you know, you want you want to take into what take on what they're saying um, and you want to implement that into your strategy. 
because you know um they're they're the right voices to listen to um mm. yeah and it's, it's just getting the right getting the different voices from different stakeholders and just making sure that they feel that they're, they're they've been heard um and a stakeholder for people whom aren't business people is what what would you say that is a stakeholder yeah. oh right okay in basic terms yeah a parent's a stakeholder. The children are stakeholders. Exactly. Teachers are stakeholders. Governors are stakeholders. Um, the yeah. local community is a stakeholder. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Just a- anyone who has interaction with the organization is, in many ways, a stakeholder. And that's why maybe more representation at these meetings from more members of of that would be important. Yeah. yeah. I guess. Yeah. And help people to better understand the business of the school. Uh, if you invited more people into the, maybe the stakeholder meetings, but that's something I've always felt about any stakeholder meeting, right? Like if you have a bank, well, I used to work at the Bank of Canada, right? The Royal mm-hmm. Bank of Canada, and we'd invite stakeholders in. Now that was mostly very rich men of a certain age and of a certain maybe even complexion, right? And they didn't understand maybe everybody who worked at the bank mm-hmm. if that makes or went to the bank or or you know they're basically their customer they didn't understand everybody who was their customer whom are stakeholders right exactly. and, and it's best that you can have every representative that you can at these meetings so I, I, that's something i feel strongly about what would you recommend to somebody who would like to become a marketer what's something you would recommend to them um marketing is all about outcomes <laughs> so if you're an outcome driven person you want to make a change you know you're you need to be quite dynamic you need to be able to think on your feet Things change all the time. Um, you need to be able to take in, I won't say criticisms per se, but you need, you need to be able to take in all I sorts of information. I mean, you do have to take in kid- criticisms, I'd yeah. say. You can't get angry about someone saying, we don't like your video or we don't like that tweet. You have to just be okay with it, don't yeah. you? Yeah, but in, in, this, in, uh, in the same breath, people, let's say you have a head teacher or whatever and says, oh, I just don't like that video. And you're like, oh, what's your reason? I just don't like it. Was what actually you'll find that the video wasn't made for you. It was made for our audience. Uh, going back to the stakeholders so that, again. Yeah. But, a certain but this is more a, a perception of marketing. So that, that's another thing. You, you kind of, as you go along, you need to educate people as, you, as you're doing your job. So there, a lot of people, they're like, oh, I just don't like that color. It's like, yeah, well... It's, is it part of this brand? Is it going to help us get mm. our outcomes? So that's a big part of it, you know. Um, yeah, because sometimes people try to tell the marketer what to do and maybe they don't necessarily have the knowledge. I'll come out and say it. Uh, they, they might not have the knowledge and that can cause a big problem. Like I used when I worked for the bank again, going back to that example, our boss would, you know, he'd want the site to function correctly and we'd try to talk to him about that, but re- he was more concerned about was the appearance of it, the aesthetic of the site, rather than the actual functionality of the site. So we'd show them this algorithm or this process that worked really well on the site, and he just wasn't interested. He was just interested in how it looked. So we could have presented him basically a site that didn't function correctly but looked nice, yeah. and he'd have been totally fine with that. And I think that's the, that's the way it is for most people who aren't marketers. They don't fully understand beyond that, I would say, shallow perception of it, you know? But um, saying that, I'd I'd have to give credit to young people because mm-hmm. they've lived in the digital age. Absolutely. They're very literate when it comes to marketing and they're very familiar with all these things, you know? Cuz like YouTube, it's very evident every YouTuber will say, "Please subscribe because it helps yeah, with my marketing." Click like and, and subscribe. Yeah, every, all, all these things, you know? So um young young people get it. You, you don't need to convince them. Like, you know, if um, there was interest, uh, an, an interesting activity in a classroom, I can just go into the classroom and say, can I get these photos? And pretty much most of the time, most young people will be like, yes, that's fine. Because they, they get it. They, 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 they're comfortable with it. They're not scared of it. It's actually more the teachers that you need to kind of com- ca- cajole and convince like um, the benefits of what you're trying to do. Absolutely. And on that topic of social media, remember, if you want to get involved in the conversation, you can tweet at us at KDM underscore Drama Wizard on Twitter, or you can tweet at the Teachers Talk Radio Twitter page. And again, we're talking with Eric. He's a marketer. He has worked at schools in the past as a marketer. And we're talking about marketing in schools. So if you're interested in those topics, please do get involved in the conversation. Remember, you can follow us again on Twitter or you can have a conversation with us on the Podbean app or any of our other social medias. Okay, so Eric, we're getting down to the end of it now. I was just wondering, what's, what's marketing mean to you in general? Do you think it's a good thing, a bad thing? What do you think about it? Um, I think 
yeah there, there's as um as an occupation or vocation or however you want to put it um I, I think it's got it's got its place because it's it's part of business marketing is part of business so you can't you know you can't separate them and, and yeah they're just links like that um in terms of education you know pe people have the ideas of is it ethically right to do this and that but um th this is what i find it excited to, to do marketing in education because kind of ethically keeps everything quite clean you know um, if the right person is doing it maybe someone like yourself who has an ethical bone yeah if they had the wrong person though uh, maybe a patrick bateman right <laughs> It might not be so good for the school if they're only worried about money. You do have to be concerned about children is the point. The people, yeah. yeah. You've yeah. you, you, you got to concern yourself with the people. Cause the students, yeah. The, the, whole, the whole job is about interacting with other people. Absolutely. You know? um, and you got to care about the community at community. large. You absolutely do. So th th that's a very, very good point. And what are the differences and similarities between marketing in schools and marketing in the private sector? What would you say are some of the different uh, similarities? between marketing in schools and private sector? Uh, ultimately, you just want the same objectives. You know, you want more people paying attention to what you're doing. Schools, big bank, I don't know, theme park, water park. I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> banks, are a good banks are a good example. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the end, everyone, all these companies care about is money, to be fair. I mean, it's that's money, the point of being a private all, business. You know, the, 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 the business structure of schools is different because um, it's, a, it's a public bod body. But yes, you, you want people to see what you're doing and get to know all the great things you're doing. So it's the same in. in There's business. definitely an ethical element to being a marketer in a school that doesn't exist. I would say in in other businesses, and and I think that's one of the great parts about being a marketer in a school. You don't, you have to have a conscience basically to do it. And what are some of the differences you would say between marketing in a school and in the private sector? Um, I suppose you don't need to worry too much about like um i know i suppose in in, in a private sector it's all about like each quarter mm -hmm. you got to do things got to get things done this quarter so that the time frames change when it comes to schools it's not it's each term or you know whatever it is yeah um, and they and again i think it boils down to what's most important to a school is in taking more students yeah to get funding and then they'll take that funding and recycle it into the school hopefully whereas a private business they might be just making money you know like uh, scrooge mcduck they just might be hoarding that money making a gold big gold pile you know and not actually caring about putting that back into their local community at all or or recycling it in any in any reasonable fashion and yeah i think like, that's a big difference for me uh something i've noticed a lot with schools is that they've opened up their facilities you know the sports halls you know that you can hire a sports hall for really cheap you know and, that, and that's the sort of thing that contributes to uh the brand of the Absolutely. school or the message and um yeah, that's what. Any little thing that can make a school different from another school mm. and better education for the students is a good thing. Yeah, that's, um, it. that's I, it. I I would agree with that. And in one sentence, how would you describe marketing in a school? It's a tough question, I think. Not to put you on the spot. It is I'll a bit say of a on the spot question. <laughs> creative. It, uh, no, actually. Actually, yeah, one sentence to describe marketing in a school. Yeah, marketing in school. I'd say intense. Um, every day's different. Oh, Maybe just... it can't be summarized though in one sentence. It's kind of uh, it's kind of a trick question in that way, isn't it? When yeah. People ask these questions. Yeah, but I'll, I'll just say yeah. It's 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 very different. It's um it's actually devising creative solutions to problems. Um, I, f I found like I've had to put you know, come up with the best, you know, like some of my best creative solutions through working in schools because That's a good point. sometimes your budget isn't major, you know, you, you can't, you can't just go out and just throw money at the problem. So yeah, yeah. money don't necessarily solve every problem. I don't yeah. want everyone to come out here thinking, well, if we get more money, that'll fix our school because it definitely might not. To yeah. be honest. Uh, ultimately still a public body. So yeah, you, you know, you're not going to be <laughs> you're not gonna have a Scrooge McDuck budget. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, but, but yeah. Not at a public school, at least. The restraints of uh, a budget requires like creative I've, thinking. I heard about a private school. I don't remember if it was Harrow or where it was. Harrow is one of these very famous private schools in the UK, and they had their own golf course. 
So one of their unique selling points was that they have a golf course. I've been to a few private schools and it's incredible. You, you get a lot of fun in, funding. Um, they have yeah. their own, like not, I think it was an 18 hole golf course. Yeah, they have Amazing. swimming pools. They have, you know, I don't know what the fencing. They have all they, kinds they, of yeah, things. They love fencing. And it's a shame <laughs> that like our students can't have the same opportunities, you know. It is but, a shame. Um, there, there has been some evidence, actually, that public schools are starting to slightly outperform those schools, and that's something I want to do an episode about in the future, is that the mm. performance of our public school students is going up in the UK, and the private school students are a bit stagnant, actually, and they want to recruit more teachers from the public sector, the better teachers. So I think that's an interesting idea. But my point I'm trying to make is public schools have resources. They have great teachers, and it doesn't matter to me if you have a golf course at your school or you have a swimming pool at your school or whatever, what's most important is that your your student will have the best teacher in front of them. And I think in pro public schools, you have the best, most hardest working teachers. I'm not just saying that because I've worked in the pro oh, public yeah. sector. Oh, yeah, passionate, passionate yes. teachers. Because you're not is... doing it for the money. Mm. Some of these people in the private sector are doing it for the money purely, right? Mm. And I always am a firm believer that money alone won't create anything good. It mm. won't create anything good onto itself, you know? Um, be it C.S. Lewis, he used to think something similar. Yeah, so. Definitely. Do you have any final thoughts, Eric, before we before we end this, sh this little interview? Um, mainly, yeah. I've just really enjoyed being on the show. Um, yeah. It's a very niche subject, so I've, I've really enjoyed being able to, um, yeah, just just you know, uh, explain this this type of work. And uh, yeah, I, I think it'd be great to come on again. We can have a different absolutely. Angle, we can different look at angle different. around this subject. Uh, but yeah. yeah, and there's more to talk about. Eric would like to come back on and give some further research. So he's going to do some research and present more facts to everyone. But I thought it'd be great today to get just encompass his experience as a, as a whole. And, you know, that's what's most important and what we want to show on this show is different experiences. You know, we had Dalton on in the past. He, he's an Irish teacher, giving a perspective of being a foreign teacher in the UK. And Eric's giving a perspective as a marketer who, who you know, lived in the UK most of his life. And I have the perspective of as, as a foreigner who works here and, you know, didn't grow up here at all. And, you know, my wife would have a different experience as well. It'd be great to get her to come on at some point if she doesn't act so shy. <laughs> uh, that'd be good. But, you know, what it's all about in the end is perspective. And I'm really glad that Eric could come on the show today. And I just want to thank him again for coming on and talking to everybody about this. And again, if you want to get involved in the conversation, please tweet at us at KDM underscore Drama Wizard on Twitter. You can also follow us on the Teachers Talk Radio Twitter page, or you can follow us on the Podbean app. Remember, our topic today is marketing. Should schools have marketing? What do you think? Our school's a business. Thank you very much for listening, and have a wonderful day, and enjoy the rest of the show. Into the mix. Why do so, schools... So that was my interview with Eric. He's a marketer again, and I want to thank him for coming on and do, having the conversation with us, and I hope you all enjoyed that and got a little bit of information from a marketer's perspective. I'm going to go and play our lovely sponsors one last time because we are getting to the end of our show. Thank you again for listening. This is Teachers Talk Radio, Sunday Brunch Show. Here with me, your host, Caleb Merchant. You can tweet at me at KDM underscore Drama Wizard on Twitter, or you can tweet at us at the TT Radio 2022. That's our handle on Twitter. Thank you very much, and here's a word from our lovely sponsors. This episode of Teachers Talk Radio has been made possible with support from Witherslack Group, the UK's leading provider of SEN education and care. They're here to support you too through an ever-growing offer of free resources, including webinars, podcasts, articles, and events aimed at supporting teaching professionals like you. Visit their website at www.witherslackgroup.co.uk to find out more. Introducing Uplearn. Uplearn is an online curriculum learning resource for A-levels that improves student outcomes whilst reducing teacher workloads. Teachers use Uplearn to facilitate independent learning and consolidation of classroom material. Over 150 schools have seen grade improvements with Uplearn, including St Paul's Girls School, Michaela Community School and ARC Schools. Book a demo at uplearn.co.uk and quote TTR for 10% off. That's Uplearn, U-P-L-E-A-R-N.co.uk. Introducing Bulb. 
With evidence-based learning at the forefront of education, let Bulb Digital Portfolios help reshape your educational practice. Bulb helps teachers teach and learners learn. Bulb is an easy-to-use, fully accessible digital platform that captures students' digital learning assets in one place, allowing them to evidence their learning and reflect on their growth. Our dedicated team of education specialists are on hand to ensure that Bulb fits seamlessly into all of your teaching practices. Come take a look and get a free account at bulbapp.com. If you're listening to this, then we know we share one thing in common. A passion for the type of outstanding education that every child deserves. That's what makes us the leading provider of specialist education and care. We need people like you to help us achieve even more. With us, you'll be given all the resources and support you need, offered a clear path to career progression, and be rewarded with some of the best salaries and benefits the industry has to offer. We are with a Slack Group. If you'd like to find out more, we'd love to hear from you. Visit www.withaslackgroup.co.uk forward slash careers and be part of our future. And that's a word from our lovely sponsors. Thank you again for listening to the show. Today we're talking about marketing. This is the Sunday Brunch Show here on Teachers Talk Radio. And my name is Caleb Merchant, and I'm your host. You can find me at KDM underscore Drama Wizard on Twitter. You can follow us on all of our social medias. And it's been lovely today to talk to you about marketing in schools. I'm going to wrap up the show now because we're at the five-minute warning. So, businesses. Are schools businesses? This has been the question of the day. Do schools need to worry about marketing? To me, schools do need to worry about marketing. Schools are businesses, whether we like it or not. That is the truth of the time we live in. So we must learn to not see marketing at our schools as members of a community outside of our own. They're a member of our community, the marketers. Many of them want to help the students, as Eric has shown us today. They could be more, they could be marketers from a private sector like me, but they still are doing this because they want to help the students. In my opinion, Marketers are there to help the school, and you should talk to the marketer in your school and try to get to know them and try to get to see what they are doing to help your school. Remember, you are, as we said in our interview, a shareholder of this school. You are somebody who wants to help see this school succeed. Schools are big businesses, as we've talked about today in, here in the UK. They need to have marketers in order to reach a bigger audience of people even in our world today we every individual are a type of brand whether we like it or not that is the truth of the matter so what can you do to help improve marketing in your school well i think it has to start a conversation with your marketer tell them what you think see what they say maybe there's something you could get involved in like me when i helped eric with the video that we had talked about or many times when i've done other things towards marketing in our school. A lot of the drama teachers will understand what I mean. And art teachers, you know, you're the perfect people to help market the school. Your artwork and the things that you do can be shown on school websites, on school Twitter pages, on school YouTube pages, in order to get more people coming who want to take part in the arts, of course, because that's a unique selling feature of school. The same goes for sports teams. Market these things in your school. Take pictures, uh, obviously with permission from the parents. Take videos. Get your marketer in there at those games, getting stories from the students. Get the students to start their own club like they did in Eric's school. I hope that this helped you today, this talk, and I hope that it helped you to see the marketers aren't all bad, but people who want to help our students. Uh, that, remember, they could work for the private sector and maybe make more money, but they choose to work at schools because they have a love, hopefully, and a passion for education of young people. Again, that's why we're all there, and that's why they should be there too. So, hopefully, teaching staff and all the people involved in schools and mentor and marketers can get together and work together to improve the future education for all students who are, in the end, the most important shareholder of them all. My name is Caleb DeMerchant. Thank you for listening today to my show, The Sunday Brunch Show, here on Teachers Talk Radio. 
I hope you learned something about marketing. In the future, we will be having more topics. If you'd like to get involved in those topics and have an interview with me in advance, I'm happy to do an advanced interview with you online. I'm also happy to find you on all kinds of different things and we can we get, get in contact with each other and have a discussion. My name is Caleb DeMerch and I'm a tutor at the University of Bedfordshire for music and drama. I hope that if you're looking to get involved in those as a teacher, becoming a teacher, please find us there. Again, that's at the University of Bedfordshire here in the lovely UK. My name is Caleb DeMerch and thank you very much for listening to my show. This is the Sunday Brunch Show here on Teachers Talk Radio. You can follow me on KDM underscore Drama Wizard on Twitter. And thank you for listening, everyone. I hope you really enjoyed today's show, and I hope that you listen in the future. You've been listening to Teachers Talk Radio. Tune in live and listen back at TTRadio. Thank you for all that you do, everyone. We look forward to hearing listening. from you next time on Teachers Talk Radio.